Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests, members of staff and the alumni, graduates, well wishers, good, good afternoon. afternoon, buenas tardes, konnichiwa, how wanna do, thank you for tuning in. We are elated that you have joined us in our celebration of excellence. I am Leo Lewis. And I am Stephanie Blair Allen. Welcome to Glenmuir High School's 58th Graduation Ceremony. and simply proud of our graduates because amid this pandemic, they have weathered the storms of despair and uncertainty. We are here to celebrate with them five successful years spent at this hub of excellence. And you will witness the rite of passage of some 200 students who have mastered their education through the face-to-face and online learning provided by Glenn Muir. That is very right. The school's administration made a number of adjustments to their timetable, reallocated resources, and made several infrastructural changes to facilitate student learning. This was truly the year for blended learning and as such, demonstrates the progression towards grooming students to become independent learners. We are so glad that they've shown that they are more than capable of such a change, demonstrable by today's awards and festivities. Approximately 25% of these students are graduating with academic honors, and 25 students will be recognized for their outstanding achievement in extracurricular activities. It was no easy feat mastering learning in the middle of a pandemic. Each and every student has surpassed Glenmuir's grueling academic process, and now they are reaping the honors that come with it. Leo, 
And as their geography teacher, Mrs. Yvonne Lewis would say, igneous rocks are formed under extreme heat and pressure. <laughs> true, true that, Stephanie. But these students aren't just rocks. Each one is a diamond in his or her own right. We have to salute them, especially this year's valedictorian, Miss Jade Little. Absolutely. This young lady has boasted an overall average of 91% over these five years. And it would be criminal to ignore mentioning the whopping 99.14% average that she earned in second form. She is truly a gem.
procession of graduates comes to an end, we now commence the valedictory service. And, of course, in the true Glenmuir spirit, it would be remiss of us to say that these achievements are simply born out of human efforts. And so, Glenmuir continues to acknowledge that without God, it would not have been the beacon it continues to be to this day. And now, or open in him, a rendition of Lord of Creation, to you be all praise, written by Jack Copley Winslow and performed by the Glenmuir High School Choir. As we continue, I invite Sister Alverine Roberts, who in true flagrance fashion will open in prayer and invoke the presence of the Holy Spirit. Sister Roberts is a graduate of the Wilson Carlisle College of Evangelism and is now ministering at the St. Gabriel's Anglican Church in Maypen. 
She has been the school's chaplain for the past 28 years. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God of all power and might, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our school. We thank you for every member of staff, board of management, every parent and child. We thank you even for the hardships we have been through this academic year. You have blessed us with your grace and mercy through good times and bad, and have brought us to this occasion when we can celebrate growth, attainment, achievement, and transformation. Help us to remember that without you, we would not have made it. Help us always to remember that all things are possible in and through you. Now let your light shine upon us as we celebrate what you have done in and through us. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray the family prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. And now we invite Mr. Joel Ellis, a member of the graduating class of 2021, to present a reading from the book of James, chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. A reading from Paul's epistle to the Romans, chapter 12, beginning at the first verse. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, Fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. I'm speaking to you out of deep gratitude for all that God has given me, and especially as I have responsibilities in relation to you. Living then as every one of you do in pure grace, it's important that you not misinterpret yourselves as people who are bringing this goodness to God. No, God brings it all to you. The only accurate way to understand ourselves is by what God is and by what he does for us, not by what we are and what we do for him. In this way, we are like the various parts of a human body. Each part gets its meaning from the body as a whole, not the other way around. The body we're talking about is Christ's body of chosen people. Each of us find our meaning and function as a part of his body. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. Be friends with who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. Don't burn out. Keep yourselves fierce.
fueled and aflame. Be alert, servants of the Master, cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times, pray all the harder. Help needy Christians, be inventive in hospitality. Bless your enemies, no cursing under your breath. Laugh with happy friends when they are happy. Share tears when they are down. Get along with each other. Don't be stuck up. Make friends with nobodies. Don't be that great somebody. Don't hit back. Discover beauty in everyone. If you've got it in you, get along with everybody. Don't insist on getting even. This is the word of the Lord. A fitting scripture indeed. We truly believe in God's ability to impart wisdom. The school would confess that their contribution or impartation of any kind of wisdom that would benefit these students is but a mere fraction of a wisp of what the Lord can provide. And as we mention wisp, here are some wisps who are standing on the shoulders of stalwarts. We speak of none other than the Glenmuir High School Choir. These youngsters are inheriting the legacy that was left here by the likes of Justin Leo White, Marjorie Henry O.D., Doreen O'Connor, Mark Bradford, Joel Edwards, Ewan Simpson, and so many more exceptional individuals. That is so true. And here today, we will be blessed as they bring to us, It's My Time to Shine. Ladies and gentlemen, the Glenmuir High School Choir. And to bookend this invocation, we invite Sister Roberts once again to offer the closing prayer and a blessing. Let us pray. Lord, 
we commit our graduates into your hands. As they leave this place, go before them to guide them. Go with them to encourage, strengthen, and uphold them. Be around them to breathe your Holy Spirit upon them as you show them the way. Be with their parents who have had to make difficult decisions. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Provide for them in every aspect of life. You know their plans, their needs, their strengths, their weaknesses, their fears. Your word says that you will never fail us if we put our trust in you. So help our parents and children to love and trust you, to depend on you, and to step out boldly with you. Breathe your peace and protection upon them and us as together we place our future in your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. And now, we step into the graduation ceremony and we hit the ground running with greetings, salutations, and welcome. And to formally greet you, a man who needs no introduction whatsoever, but to suffice the necessary protocols, ladies and gentlemen, here is Vice Chairman of the Board of Management, past principal, UWE Government Scholarship Awardee, esteemed alumnus, and mathematician, Mr. Clement Radcliffe. Dr. Marsha Smalling, principal and past student. Dr. Sandra Lindsay, past student and guest speaker. Members of the Board of Management, staff, students, guests, and our distinguished Graduates, good afternoon. Mine is the distinct pleasure to join the school and the graduates along with the army of friends, families, and associates who will over time participate in this August occasion. In my role as board vice chairman, my task is to extend welcome to graduation 2021, a most pleasing task that is punctuated with a modicum of nostalgia. As I greet you in this virtual space, I am constrained to comment on the effect of current realities to this activity. The pandemic is extended for the second year, and so the involvement of our graduates in mostly virtual learning would have made it difficult for them to realize their full potential in external examinations. Further, we miss the march of the graduates in their resplendent regalia. Also, we miss the full and enthusiastic participation of families and friends and the display of the learned skills of the graduates during the function. It is the view of the board that all is not lost, however. You are reminded, graduates, of the lessons you were taught over the years. There are also the above average poten academic potential of you all, and indeed, the character you developed at this very good school. These will collectively prepare you 
for what is necessary to advance in this changing world. You have no choice but to go and conquer it after these celebrations are over. But my dear graduates, my welcome is primarily to remind you that this is a time for celebrations, a time to mark the transition from one stage of your life to the next. Enjoy today with your families and friends and do so in earnest. And when tomorrow comes, use the tools that you were provided to chart an appropriate path ahead. Again, welcome. And now, Dr. Marsha Smalling. Leo, she must have had quite a year at the helm. No doubt, Stephanie. Not only has she had to navigate and steer the school in a direction that leads it away from the negative impacts of the pandemic, she has also had to re-engage staff to develop new strategies and operations to prepare this budding brood of brilliant bookworms while finding time to complete and publish her very first book. She will now inform us of the challenges and triumphs of the school year, and no doubt, she will find every silver lining in every dark cloud. Former principal and now vice chairman of the board of management, Mr. Clement Radcliffe, other members of the board of management, Sister Alverine Roberts, or school chaplain, or distinguished guest speaker, Dr. Sandra Lindsay, Mr. Errol Houghton, territorial education officer, the executive body of the PTA led by Mrs. Francine Rooms, the fast growing and impactful alumni, our astute, diligent and zealous vice principals, Mr. Howard Edwards and Mr. Dean of Von Hales, our team of conscientious staff members, parents, students, well-wishers, and the stupendous class of 2021, I extend to you warm, flagrant greetings. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating the class of 2021, who through their resilience, diligence, confidence, patience, belief in self and God, meandered their way through the multiplicity of challenges to earn the privilege of graduating from the hub of excellence. Bene factum, well done. Admittedly, graduation is one of our most anticipated calendar activities each year. Our graduates, parents, relatives, well-wishers, and staff glam up in a celebratory mood to celebrate this significant milestone. Graduation ceremonies have an iceberg effect. As we bask in the festivities, many do not stop to think about the level of planning, organizing, reorganizing, strategizing that take place behind the scenes. Let's just send some positive energy of gratitude to Mr. Howard Edwards, Ms. Trishan Graham, Mr. Radcliffe Richards, the coordinators, form teachers, administrative staff, and other members of the graduation committee for pulling off another graduation with a buzz. Thanks, colleagues. As you can imagine, this academic year has been the greatest test of our faith, resilience, and commitment to the vision and mission of our flagship institution. However, our theme, excellence is a must, let's do it, served as our mantra and propelled us to persevere beyond the uncertainties, thoughts of quitting, fear, confusion, and frustration that came with online and their blended approach to learning. We worked collaboratively, not only because we believe that teamwork makes the dream work, but also because we embrace the Kenyan proverb, 
sticks in a bundle are unbreakable. Ladies and gentlemen, or graduands, it was no easy walk in the park to get over 97% of our students registered for online classes. It was no easy feat to solicit support to get gadgets and data for both students and staff. Keeping the staff motivated to teach students who sometimes logged on to classes but were sleeping, doing chores, hygiene, or roaming the streets was not an easy goal to score. Keeping our students motivated, disciplined, and optimistic was challenging. Responding to the never-ending requests from students and parents was sometimes the recipe for a mental breakdown. Chasing some of the students for SBAs left us gasping for breath. Mrs. Peter Kane, you led this process like a boss. Mr. Edwards, teachers, other colleagues, I continue to laud you. Glenn Muir is because you are. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here today celebrating because of the invaluable support from a number of stakeholders. Our alumni from across the globe for providing scholarships, gadgets, data, care packages, and for attending our online events and just cheering us on. To our PTA for keeping the parents educated and empowered through the parenting webinar, general meetings, and the renovation of one of our bathrooms. Our peer educators, led by the guidance department, who consistently kept us all motivated throughout the academic year with your short videos and your motivational quotes. Our guidance department who provided psychosocial care for us, it meant a lot. To do an address and not share some of our flagrant moments is like exercising and not bursting a drop of sweat. So let's go. Shamir Martin is the national chess champion for the junior under 18 age group and will represent Jamaica in the Karifta Championship. Jalil Williams scored 1,550 points out of a maximum 1,600 in his SAT assessment. He was selected as one of the elite students to participate in the Caribbean Science Foundation SPICE summer program, whose mission is to groom the next generation of Caribbean science and engineering leaders. Graduands, as you continue your sojourn, as you continue to train for the big events in your life, I leave with you a few tips that I know can help you to be the best version of yourselves. Do not allow the opinions of others to determine your value and outcomes. Not everyone will pick you as the winner. You do not have to finish first to celebrate a winning moment. Celebrate your small wins and keep on going. Your first step may be a misstep, but never make it your last. Keep pushing to the end. An act of gratitude can create a grand breakthrough for you. Once again, Congratulations, and we wish for you Godspeed as you continue to live your dreams you have created for yourselves. May God bless Glenmere High School, the hub of excellence. May God bless Jamaica, land we love. And may we forever proclaim Flagrant's Veritatis Studio, burning with a zeal for truth. Ah, oh, yes. And now the guest speaker, alumna of Glenmere High School and Director of Patient Care Services and Critical Care at Northwell Health, Dr. Sandra Lindsay. Sandra Lindsay was the first American to be immunized against COVID-19 outside of a clinical trial. 
Since then, she has served as a panelist and a speaker on numerous national and international platforms addressing the COVID-19 pandemic, public health, vaccine hesitancy, and the importance of getting vaccinated. In July 2021, President Joseph Biden awarded Dr. Lindsay at the White House with outstanding American by choice recognition for her achievements and contributions as an immigrant. Dr. Lindsay also served as the Grand Marshal in New York's Hometown Heroes Parade in Manhattan, representing the healthcare workers who served on the front lines of the COVID 19 pandemic. Dr. Lindsay has more than 26 years of nursing experience. She joined Northwell Health's Lenox Hill Hospital in 1994 as an oncology nurse. Three years later, Dr. Lindsay pursued her dream, becoming a critical care nurse. She worked as a bedside nurse in various critical care units, served as a nurse manager for the Adult Medical Intensive Care Unit at Lenox Hill Hospital for more than seven years, and then assumed the critical care director role at Long Island Jewish Medical Center. Dr. Lindsay graduated from Borough of Manhattan Community College in 1993 as the valedictorian of her nursing program. She earned a bachelorate degree in nursing from St. Joseph's College, a master's degree in nursing from Herbert Lemon College, and a master's in business administration from Hofstra University. In May 2021, Dr. Lindsay completed a doctorate of health sciences with a concentration in global health and organizational behavior and leadership from A.T. Still University. Raised in Jamaica by her grandparents, Dr. Lindsay moved to the United States in 1986. When Dr. Lindsay is not pursuing her studies or working, she enjoys adventurous traveling, visiting Jamaica, reading leadership books and articles, and gardening. Ladies and gentlemen, let's listen attentively to the soul-stirring speech of the phenomenal and inspiring Dr. Dr. Sandra, Sandra Lindsay. Lindsay. Thank you for that glowing introduction. Dr. Marcia Smolin, Sister Alvarine Roberts, Board of Management, Ministry of Education officials, faculty, staff, graduates, parents, extended family and friends. Thank you. It is indeed an honor to be asked by the faculty to speak at your commencement ceremony. And it's a duty I accepted graciously. Truly one of the most special responsibilities I've been asked to take on since I was placed in the COVID vaccine spotlight back in December 2020. I vividly remember my 1985 graduation. I remember the joy, pride, and sense of achievement that my family and I felt as I walked across the graduation stage. It is surreal to be standing here at this podium addressing you graduates, as I reflect on the shy teenager I was when I attended Glenmuir. I was one of those students who was quieter, who flew under the radar at school. And although I was infrequently in the spotlight, I was still observant and learning the lessons all around me. And at Glenmuir, those lessons were abundant. And those lessons led me to today's commencement theme. Excellence is a must. Let's do it. This is a motto that befits an institution known nationally and internationally for producing top scholars, those who have excelled and contributed to different fields internationally. But what is excellence? And how does it apply to you? Excellence means being outstanding, as it applies to you or as it applies to us. We should all be striving to be outstanding in whatever we pursue, 
Glenmere is always ensured that we are equipped with the necessary tools and the foundation we need to achieve excellence in all facets of life. When I was a student here, I learned the lessons of respect, pride, discipline, and determination, all of which have aided me in excelling in whatever I pursue. I've tried to carry these principles and goals with me and even impart them to others throughout my personal and professional journeys. It is written on the school's website that Glenmuir, M-U-I-R, is more, M-O-R-E, than just a school. That is so true. The faculty did not just focus on academia, but ensured that we left school as well-rounded individuals, ready to take on a challenging and constantly changing world. That approach has enriched Glenmere as a place with a history of excellence. It is evident in the fact that all of Glenmere's principals, except the very first, Dr. Scott, have been students here. Excellence has been a guidepost for me throughout my life. But excellence does not simply materialize without holding on to the principles taught here at Glenmere and without working diligently to incorporate those principles into each situation to achieve excellence. Glenmere provided me with a foundation for excellence by consistently setting high standards and expectations. From the time I put on my maroon uniform with white tunic in the morning until I took it off at home at the end of the day, I knew what was expected of me. Even our clean, well-appointed campus transmitted the message that I had to take care in everything that I did, from my appearance to my schoolwork. Glenmere has always shown a seriousness of purpose that I took to heart. That purpose and those high expectations extended to my behaviors outside of school as well. When I wore my Glenmere uniform, there were no social activity that I wasn't doing the right thing and paying close attention to what I was doing. I often think about that now when I put on my uniform for work. It is a way for me to set expectations even if it's starting from the outside in. Glenmere also offered me many lessons in respect. I experienced that in the form of respect from my fellow students who were like my dear colleagues. Of course, I felt respect from my teachers and from the people who helped Glenmere run every day, even those who maintain food and environmental services on campus. They modeled respect on every level to their colleagues and to us students. They made it clear every day. I've carried that respect for myself and others in my heart throughout my academic career and my professional career. Glenmere also gave me the emotional and academic resources to succeed. I always felt cared for as a student. That care gave me the strength I needed to succeed as a student. And even when I graduated high school and went to New York at just 18 years old, provided me the confidence and courage I needed to navigate and succeed in a new country. I hadn't attended college yet, and I didn't yet have a clear vision of what my professional future would bring. I had to rediscover and rebuild my sense of purpose and my sense of ambition until I found my way to the college that would lead me to the world of nursing. That took time and perseverance and would have been much tougher for me if I hadn't been nurtured and shown the way by the people at Glenmere. I try to remember that when I'm managing my team at work. 
every person on that team isn't just a worker, but someone who needs to be cared for and given the emotional and tangible resources they need to complete their work and complete it well. When people have those tools, they have a chance to excel. The strong foundation Glenmere gave me helped me to stay on a path to excel, even when excellence felt beyond my reach. Obtaining my master's degree in business was one of the toughest times in my academic life. The biggest academic hurdle I'd faced at that point. Sometimes excellence didn't seem possible. There were times I felt like I would burn out and not be able to continue my work. But I was able to find a moment to ask myself if I had reached the peak of my excellence. I would not have been able to find it within myself to ask that question if it hadn't been for Glenmere, which planted a seed within me to accept nothing short of excellence. And as tough as it was for me to make it through business school, I didn't stop school when I obtained that degree. I decided that I had not yet reached the peak of my excellence, so I kept going. When I obtained my doctoral degree in health sciences a few months ago, that was on my mind to remain in pursuit of excellence. There is always knowledge to be gained and there will always be difficulties and sometimes obstacles on the way. I suppose there might have been fewer academic obstacles for me when I was a student at Glenmere if I had been able to consult Siri and Alexa on a few things. On a more serious and present day note, of course, the pandemic stands out to me as one of the biggest challenges I've faced professionally. There were times when we healthcare workers faced logistical and medical unknowns. And there were times when we experienced exhaustion and overwhelming loss. When I had to keep going, I sometimes thought about the morning devotions we used to recite at Glenmere. It helped me to have faith and hold on to hope and a little bit of strength when I needed it. That need for hope was a primary motive for me to accept the request to be vaccinated on the national stage. I hoped that my actions would offer people hope and strength. That's something I knew I needed to hold on to. Just like I've held on to the Glenmere School motto, Flagrans Veritatis Studio, burning with the zeal for truth. For me, that zeal for truth has included knowledge and excellence. On a professional level, and of course, on a personal level, I hope to keep gaining and using my knowledge for excellence. I hope that all Glenmere students, past and present, continue to burn with the zeal for truth as well as knowledge and excellence. That excellence certainly has driven me and been a must for me. And I hope that your sense of respect, pride, discipline, and determination will help you pursue excellence in everything you do for yourself and others. I'm truly optimistic when I think about how you current graduates are going to take on the world, facing its challenges and problems with a zealous hope that you will put into everything you do. I look forward to seeing and reading your stories and seeing how high you soar. Class of 2021, congratulations on your commencement. Best wishes on your next chapter. And thank you again for this moving opportunity to speak to you. Sound words, right, Leo? Dr. Lindsay is indeed an esteemed alumna. Absolutely. 
And at this juncture, the graduates will be awarded for their several achievements. We begin, however, by first acknowledging the presentation from the Glenmere Alumni Association South Florida chapter. This award is given to Ms. Jade Little for her outstanding academic achievement. On behalf of the Florida chapter of the Glenmere Pass Student Association, I want to make this presentation to Ms. Jade Little for the fantastic job she has done over this past school year. It has been a tumultuous year, but irrespective, she has managed to achieve the ICE Award. And for that, we want to make this presentation to her and for her to continued success in her future endeavors. And now we salute the soon-to-be alumni and stalwarts in their own right, a crop of students exhibiting academic excellence. Ladies and gentlemen, the graduating class of 2021. Handing out these well-deserved awards are Mr. Dino Van Hales, Vice Principal, Stephanie Lindsay Irving, Glenmere Administrative Representative, Mrs. Prudence Simpson, Vice President of the Glenmere Pass Students Association, Jamaica Chapter, and Mrs. Francine Rooms, President of the Parent Teachers Association. And to kick things off, we commence with the students who've achieved honor-worthy performances in academics. Kenelia Bailey, Academic Honors. Anitri Beadle, Academic Honors. Kaylee Benloss, Academic Honors and Outstanding Achievement in Rangers. Creighton Bourne, Academic Honors. Vianne Brown, Academic Honors and Outstanding Achievement in Dance. Torian Bryan, Academic Honors. Shante Clark, Academic Honors. Jamar Cunningham, Academic Honors and Outstanding Achievement for Spanish Festival. Lisa K. Anderson, Academic Honors. Mm -hmm. 
Ariana Cyrus, Academic Honours. Kingsley Davidson, Academic Honours. Ravi Deshanoil, Academic Honours. Rajay Dinal, Academic Honours and Outstanding Achievement for Spanish Festival. Coyote Elson, Academic Honours and Outstanding Achievement for Spanish Festival. Therese Bennett, Academic Honours. Danique Gordon, Academic Honours and Outstanding Achievement as a Peer Educator and for Key Club. Tamisia Brown, Academic Honours. Dana Graham, Academic Honours and Outstanding Achievement for Rangers. Yannick Jones, Academic Honours. Tamira Lawrence, Academic Honours and Outstanding Achievement for Spanish Festival. Denicia Lewis, Academic Honours and Outstanding Achievement in the Environmental Club. Amelia Lovelace, Academic Honours. Jade Little, Academic Honours and Outstanding Achievement in Ranger. Denicia Martin, Academic Honours. Antoine McFarlane, Academic Honours. Kayla McLean, Academic Honours.
Liana Miller, Academic Honors. Anya Mitchell, Academic Honors. Mark and Moulton, Academic Honors. Abigail Palmer, Academic Honors. Amanda Pink, Academic Honors. Yashika Price, Academic Honors. Tiana Reed, Academic Honors and Outstanding Achievement at Spanish Festival. Davian Riley, Academic Honors. Tamia Rose, Academic Honors and Outstanding Achievement as a Peer Educator and in the Environmental Club. Abigail Salmon, Academic Honors. Chevelle Simpson, Academic Honors. Desandria Smith, Academic Honors. Jadine Staines, Academic Honors. Jordan Stewart, Academic Honors and Outstanding Achievement in Basketball. Cheyenne Stone, Academic Honors. Shanice Strawn, Academic Honors and Outstanding Achievement in Rangers. Citra Sunanon, Academic Honors and Outstanding Achievement in Key Club. Gabriel Thomas, Academic Honors. Lee 
Leanne Thomas, Academic Honor. Rochelle Thompson, Academic Honors and Outstanding Achievement for Spanish Festival. Gabriel Watson, Academic Honors. Davian Williams, Academic Honors. Kyle Williams, Academic Honors. Shantora Williams, Academic Honors and Outstanding Achievement in Dance Society. Tawira Williams, Academic Honors. Dale Powell, Academic Honors. And now, the Outstanding Achievement Awards. Of course, just to remind us that these students have set themselves apart from their peers in the various extracurricular activities of which they were engaged. Most deserving, I believe. Marisha Bartley, Outstanding Achievement in Rangers. Armani Chin, Outstanding Achievement in Key Club. Alia Dawkins, Outstanding Achievement, Environmental Club. Rabia Fisher, Outstanding Achievement in Football. Javian Grant, Outstanding Achievement in Dance Society, Key Club, and Basketball. Danielle Lowe, Outstanding Achievement in the Environmental Club. Renique Mighty, Outstanding Achievement, Spanish Festival. Crystal Coley, Outstanding Achievement in Rangers. Harlan Richards, Outstanding Achievement, Environmental Club. Stephen Simpson, Outstanding Achievement in Football.
Natalia Stewart, Outstanding Achievement in the Environmental Club. Tanisio Williamson, Outstanding Achievement in Netball. Tanya Sweeney, Outstanding Achievement in Spanish Festival. Raheem McCoy, Outstanding Achievement in Basketball. Zakari Messam, Outstanding Achievement in Football. And now, the stalwarts who complete the class of 2021. Brittany Ashley Chanel Blair Dominique Brown Javeen Brown Najee Brown John Bryan Abigail Brown Diana Chambers Evan Douglas Janicia Edwards Miguel Anderson Tadesia Dawkins Khalil Dawkins
अच्छा मार्क एडवर्ड्स Joel Ellis Aisheba Fletcher Anthony Folks Jade Foster Devon Glaive Shelby Gooden Nicholas Dyer Alex Morris Shanika Dunkley Kimish Gordon Jada Griffiths Taj Wayne Hall Odelia Harris Angeli Henry Daniel Hines Jaden Honeygun
Britannia Howard. Alrika Jobson Stanford Lewinson Alishka Hamilton Javel Johnson Jomo Jordan Jordian Larmond Renee Leonard Romario Matthews Beyonce McKenzie Chanel McLennon Janae McPherson Trishel Miles Shanice McKay Brian Miller Michaelia Nesbeth Tamisha Oates Q 
Kiana Palmer. Kemarla Palmer. Rambone Pew Britannia Reed Stephen Richards, John Max Rowe. Rajay Sr. Ariel Shirley. Jaden Simpson. Brianna Smelly. Aretha Smith. Gabrielle Smith. Neuma Smith. Devon Sparks. Cornell Stewart. Giovanni Taylor. Chanel Thompson. Jalon Time
Elaine Walters. Dominic Watson. Patrick Wall. Akalia Williams. Christina Williams. Janae Williams. Brittany Lewis. And Rena Watt. And now the most chief of the academic honorees, Miss Jade Little, valedictorian. Ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant afternoon to you all. I am truly privileged to stand before you today as this year's valedictorian. I've been given the honor to commemorate the memories and accomplishments of the graduating class of 2021, and I am grateful for the opportunity to do so. Like the caterpillar and the butterfly, we have survived that cathartic experience. Each and every one of us has encountered an extraordinary metamorphosis, and now can reign as magnificent butterflies and journey into the unknown. To quote the famous English novelist Charles Dickens, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. And I sincerely believe this accurately describes our high school experience. Let's be honest, high school definitely taught us how to handle the triumphs and trials of life. It's no secret or debate that we have proven ourselves to be one of the most resilient classes in the history of Glenmuir High School as COVID-19 forced us to adapt to the new norm of attending online classes. But through it all, the support of loyal friends, committed teachers, awesome parents and guardians, and most importantly, the omniscient one, the Lord Almighty, guided our steps and carried us whenever we faltered. Five years ago, we entered the prestigious gates of Glenmuir High School. As young, timid first formers, we found ourselves lost in a sea of diversity. New school, new faces, new priorities. Eventually, we developed some phenomenal bonds and created unforgettable memories. Culture package was truly one of the main highlights of the first three years at Glenmere High School. Annually, the classes would battle for supremacy in the arts while showcasing our talents and promoting the Jamaican culture. The classes would go neck to neck in an effort to claim the title of being the best class. Unfortunately, my class 3H never won, but the laughs and the camaraderie that we shared during the fun-filled practices had way more significance to me 
than the unofficial title of being the best class ever. We also bonded over the accomplishments of our fellow classmates, our exceptional netballers, footballers, track stars, basketballers, and cricketers brought home numerous wins. The dynamic dancers never failed to put on a remarkable show. There was a sense of unity in each and every club. And I've come to, re to the realization that it's our school spirit, our school pride, that allows us to have such intense connections with each other. We have truly found friends that we would consider for lifers. I also distinctly remember every lunchtime in second form. We would have song clash sessions where we'd sing our hearts out and cause a ruckus on the entire campus. It's definitely one of my core memories. I also remember the true heroes of Glenmere, the students who would sell snacks whenever we were starving during class. They broke the school rule, but they rescued us from hunger on numerous occasions. Moral of the story, not all heroes wear capes. I also remember how resourceful we were whenever challenges came our way. A prime example is when students would hide their phones whenever a random phone search was conducted, as our phones were deemed contraband. I could go on I could go on all day and reminisce on the events that made high school, high school. Suddenly, fourth form rolled our own, and now we had to be even more disciplined than we were in lower school. CXC examinations were getting closer, and we had to begin to burn the midnight oil. Then, alas, out of nowhere, COVID-19 appeared and attacked us. We had to adapt to new teaching techniques and develop new learning styles that would yield great results. We had less face-to-face -face interactions with each other, yet the bonds we cultivated never failed. I saw how kind-hearted various classmates were as they were willing to always provide additional resources for their fellow classmates to truly grasp the concepts that were being taught. The Zoom meetings that we planned to finish with group assignments were not in vain. We spent our final year of high school predominantly behind computer screens. Isn't it ironic how the same pieces of technology that our parents hated so much, because according to our parents, it's always the phone's fault, became our only way of obtaining an education? Nevertheless, spending our final year mainly at home allowed us to develop a strong sense of accountability and self-discipline, core attributes that will benefit us for a lifetime. We had to learn how to strike a balance between work and play, I think it's fair to say that we are the true class of COVID. Sorry, class of 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, for five years, we worked hard. And we look forward to success, to be recognized for our time to shine. We're not having the graduation celebration we imagined, but it's still our time. It's still our opportunity to embrace adversity and burn with zeal in a world where we attend virtual school and virtual events, sometimes in our pajamas, but we persevered and that is enough. So I urge you today, fellow graduates, do not look at this year for its lost opportunities. We are entering a new chapter of our lives with a wiser understanding of how to cherish the simplest pleasures. Hugs, gatherings, celebrations, smiles, and normalcy. The way we have responded, endured, and risen above all challenges says everything about who we are. We are the graduating class of 2021, and we were born for such a time as this. We are the future, the emerging leaders, bursting onto the scene of a weary world that so desperately requires our light, energy, talent, ingenuity, resilience, and our vision. The ultimate lesson I've learned throughout the years is sometimes you need to get knocked down before you can really figure out what your fight is and how you need to fight it. Sometimes you need to feel the pain of defeat to truly activate the real passion and purpose that God has predestined for you. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 tells us, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Purpose is an essential element of you. It's the reason you're here at this particular moment in time. 
Your existence is wrapped up in the things you are here to fulfill. So whatever you choose for a career path, remember the struggles along the way are only meant to shape you for your purpose. So press on, class of 2021, with pride and purpose as you continue to burn with the zeal for truth. Thank you. And to bring this ceremony to a close, Mr. Jamar Cunningham, offering the vote of thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, graduates, it was G.B. Stern who said, silent gratitude isn't much use to anyone. We must develop an attitude of gratitude and give thanks for everything that happens to us. In the true spirit of those sentiments, I take profound pleasure in having been awarded the privilege of extended thanks to all participants and guests who have graced this joyous evening. It is truly fitting, therefore, to say thanks. Most importantly, we must begin by thanking Almighty God. We faced the challenges of a pandemic and we persevered. Our indomitable Glenmuir spirit was tested, but he was there to replenish our strength. Thank you, Lord, for making this virtual celebration possible. The Vice Chairman of the Board of Management, Mr. Clement Radcliffe, must be acknowledged for having participated in this evening's celebrations. School Chaplain, Sister Alvarine Roberts, affectionately known as Sister Jim, is most appreciated for offering spiritual guidance along our academic journey. Heartfelt gratitude to our guest speaker, Dr. Sandra Lindsay, distinguished alumna. I am positive that her words of wisdom have resonated in the minds of everyone present. The views she presented are indeed relevant. She has inspired us to continue to achieve as excellence is the tradition of Glenmuir, which you are all mandated to uphold and surpass. Thank you, Dr. Lindsay. To the lovely ladies and suave gentlemen who graciously handed out our certificates and awards, thank you for making us feel extra special and appreciated. I must also extend my sincere gratitude to all those who have guided us through our five-year tenure at Glenmuir. Our principal, Dr. Marshall Smallings, ably assisted by Vice Principal, Mr. Edwards and Mr. Hills, performed an excellent job in directing this prestigious institution. Their guidance has always motivated us to strive for excellence, and for that, we say a big thank you. Over the years, we have also been lucky enough to be taught by a group of very dedicated teachers. They have stimulated us to think more critically and, at the same time, act more compassionately. For this, we owe them a huge debt of gratitude. Special thanks to our own top-notch form coordinators, Miss Diona Holmes, Miss Trisha Han Graham, and Mrs. Denisha Peterson Burke. In particular, Ms. Holmes was our coordinator for four years. Your service has not gone without recognition. We salute you all. Our journey here today would not have been possible without the continued support of our guidance counselors, school nurse, dean of discipline, the administrative and library staff. An extra special thank you is extended to the ancillary staff who work diligently to maintain a clean environment to lessen the chances of infection, especially during this pandemic. The choir must also be lauded for an exceptional performance. An honorable mention is extended to the juicy staff who are serving us real Jamaican food. For keeping us safe and protected, we applaud the members of the security team. We also extend profound gratitude to those who have supported us in practical ways behind the scenes. The graduation committee, 
the decorators for creating such an aesthetic atmosphere, the photographers, especially Mr. Nathaniel Stewart and Ralmar Photography for streaming on the various social media platforms. Thank you, Mr. Leo Lewis and Mrs. Stephanie Blair Allen for doing the voiceovers. Ladies and gentlemen, the graduating class of 2021 is a big deal. And now, to our biggest and personal cheerleaders, our families and friends, especially our loving parents and guardians, whose love and sacrifice have enabled us to stand tall today. Your investments in us have paid big dividends. This day is as much yours as it is ours. We love you. Finally, to my fellow graduates, this journey was great because of you. Thank you, Glenmuir graduating class of 2021. My peers, my friends, my study partners for making this journey meaningful and unforgettable. We have successfully crossed another hurdle. The fact that we made it here today is a testament to our perseverance and commitment to excellence. We are all destined for greatness. Each and every one of us has the ability to achieve greatness. In closing, I entrust the flagrant's torch to the next generation of Glenmurites who will continue to relentlessly blaze a trail of excellence and remind us that we should endeavor always to live up to our motto, Flagrant's Veritati Studio, burning with the zeal for truth. Congratulations, class of 2021. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Another excellent celebration on top of excellent achievements. Indeed. We were blessed by the Lord, by the prayers, by the songs and the speeches. We, the masters of ceremonies, offer our own bit of thank yous to every individual whose contribution and tireless effort has made this production a success, stamping it with the Glenmuir mark of excellence. Absolutely. We thank the team behind the team. Miss Trisha Ann Graham, Fifth Form Coordinator, and Mr. Howard Edwards, Vice Principal. And as we close, we close in true Jamaican fashion with the National Anthem. Until next time, I am Leo Lewis. And I am Stephanie Blair Allen. Urging you to stay safe. Keep those masks up and on. Maintain social distancing. Protect each other. And in the words of a true Jamaican treasure, Walk, walk good. good.